Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Ad Mail. This is Adam Bergman, founder and CEO of IRA Financial. I'm here to help you find the answers to the most frequently asked questions from my clients about self-directed retirement accounts. If you want to learn more, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on social media. Just search IRA Financial. Hey everyone and welcome to another episode of Ad Mail. I'm Adam Bergman, tax attorney and founder of IRA Financial. On today's Ad Mail, we're going all solo 401k. Yeah, three solo 401k related questions because uh, I just felt like it. Why not? I feel like solo 401k sometimes gets the short end and a lot of the questions I'm getting on the self-directed IRA. So I figured, why not? Let's have some fun. Let's do one full podcast on just solo 401k. So without further ado, let's get started. First, questions from Zach M of Paradise, Nevada. Zach wants to know, I have a SEP IRA. I'm again using it for my small biz to save for retirement. I watched your video on the solo 401k. If I'm under 50 years old and max out my SEP, would moving to a solo 401k make sense? So it's a great question. So number one, congratulations, Zach, for Maxing out. If you're maxing out your SEP in 23, you're putting away 66K. That's amazing. Um, great job. So why would you go solo over SEP? Well, generally, the first reason is you can hit your maximum quicker, right? A SEP is a pure profit sharing plan. So assuming, Zach, you have a solo 401k, maybe you have a single member LLC, generally you can do 20% of your comp up to 66K. So if your net schedule C is 200K, You'd be able to do 200k times 20, which is 40k. So <clears throat> clearly, you're making a lot of money. You're doing really well. Congratulations. Um, with a solo K, there's profit sharing and employee deferral. So in 23, if you're under 50, you can do 22,500 plus 20 percent of your net schedule C. So on 200k, you'd be able to do 20 percent of 200. It's 40 plus 22,500 would give you the 62.5. Um, so you can get to that maximum a little quicker. But if you're maxing out, you're good, right? So why else do you go solo over SEP? Well, Roth, but because of the Secure Act 2.0, you can now do Roth contributions in SEP. Loan. For the solo account, you can borrow 50000 or 50% of your account value, whatever's less. SEP, you can't borrow a dollar. Well, if you're doing well, you may not need a loan, okay? Um, so if you don't need a loan, Roth or not, it's not an issue anymore. You're maxing out. Um, you can do alternative assets with a SEP or a solo. Honestly, for you, Zach, if you're happy in the SEP, stay in the SEP world. You do not need to go in the solo 401k world. Uh, it's rare that I say that, but not everyone gets to max out their contributions like you're doing. If, for example, you made 100k and you had a single member LLC, you'd only be able to do 20k. Whereas if you did a solo K, you'd be able to do the 22,500 plus the 20 percent, which would basically double the amount you contribute. So. Because you're maxing out, Zach, I think you're good. No need to spend more money. But um, if you need a loan or there's some other reasons, uh, like asset credit protection, then solo would work, but not uh, a necessity. Second question is from Ricky D of Lowell, Mass. Ricky wants to know, I need some money to pay off some credit card debt. I get you, dude. I'm self-employed and I'm considering opening a solo 401k with you. With high interest rates, does the solo 401k loan still make sense? So listen, I always say beggars aren't choosers, right? If you need the money and you have some money in a 401k and you're able to do a loan, um, you get 50,000 or 50% of your account value, whatever's left. So the upside is you get to touch the money, right? If you have money in a 401k plan and you're under 59 years old, you're not gonna have access to those funds because you don't have a plan trigger no bad. So unless you can satisfy a hardship, which you still have to pay tax, <clears throat> the loan's the best tax efficient way to get money out of a plan. The downside is as of May 4th, 2023, and we'll see interest rates go, the prime interest rate, the lowest interest rate you can charge yourself is 8.25%. That's a big number, right? Um, it's a lot higher than it was during COVID, which was 3.25%. The good news, Ricky, is that money goes to your plan, which is you. So yeah, you're paying a higher interest rate, which is still lower than probably what you're paying a credit card company, upwards of 20% plus. Um, but Ricky, the beauty is that if you have the ability to pay back the loan, and that's 
the key. You got to be able to pay back the loan. Okay. So let's do some math here. Um, <clears throat> let's say you borrow 50K. Okay. It's a five year loan. Okay. You pay back um, quarterly um, interest rate of 8.25%. Okay. Your monthly interest and principal. Um, is a thousand dollars and nineteen cents and eighty one cents. So the total interest over five years is eleven thousand one eighty eight. If you did instead of eight point two five percent, if you're back in COVID, three point two five percent. I'm just going to give you a little uh, math to play with. You would um, your total interest would be four thousand two forty. So you're almost like tripling the amount of interest you're paying. Okay, so. So, you know, just think about it. Um, obviously, the interest rates are a lot higher. Um, but again, that money is going to you. So you can look at it this way. On $50,000 rate of return, you're getting 8.25% versus 3.25% in COVID, which is good. Guaranteed 8.25%. You just need to make sure you can pay it, right? You just got to make sure you can make um, the payments. That's the key. Um, if you can't make the payments, then uh, obviously not worth talking about, right? So it's all about making the payments, but if you can do it, then you're looking at a situation where you're able to get, you're able to get um, a lot more money into your plan, okay? So um, there you go, great question. Um, loans are gonna get more popular. I, I read somewhere um, a few days ago that uh, this is actually the lowest saving rate and the highest uh, debt rate that individual, um, Americans have had in history. So um, things could get ugly. So I get you if you got a tap at your plan, just make sure you can pay it back. Third and final question on today's podcast is from Chris T of Corpus Christi, Texas. Chris T wants to know, I have a business with five employees that I own 100% of and want to set up a solo 401k for my wife's side business. She's not an employee of my business and I will not have anything to do with her business. Can I set up a solo 401k for her business? So the answer is yeah. And the reason why is there's no attribution from spouses if there's no cross ownership or cross uh, you know, employment. So under the control group rules, the way it works is if you own more than 80% of two businesses, they're treated as one business. And there's also rules for brother, sister corporations, um, and some affiliated service type companies. But just to keep things simple, based off your fact pattern, Chris, if let's say you and your wife own 50-50 of both businesses. So you had this business, you had five employees, 50-50, and then you have this other business. And let's say one sold tacos and the other one sold, uh, I don't know, uh, trees. So nothing related. But the fact that there's common ownership, right? 50-50, 50-50, over 80%. There's attribution between family members like spouses. You're basically deemed to own more than 80% of both businesses. Department of Labor will consider you one business. And therefore, you'd have to offer your plan to all your employees in both businesses. But here in your specific fact pattern, you have a situation where you own a business, your wife is not involved in that business, and then your wife has a business and you're not involved in that business. There's no cross affiliation. There is no cross ownership or cross employment. Therefore, there'd be no attribution and therefore your wife would be able to have a solo 401k for her business. Only she would be able to participate or her other partners. You would not be able to participate in her plan. She should not be an employee or participate in your business with the five employees. Keep both businesses separate, no cross ownership, no cross employment. Christy, you're good to go. Um, that's it. That's another ad mail in the bag. I hope you guys um, enjoyed today's podcast. Um, it's a lot of fun. I appreciate you guys spending some time with me. If you have questions, let me know. Love to hear from all of you. You can send an email to info.irofinancial. Leave a comment on our amazing YouTube channel, um, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can find us uh, and uh, we are excited to hear from all of you. So um, this podcast is only as good as the questions I get. And it's been really damn good over the last, I don't know, three or four years. But uh, let's wrap it up. Let's get some more questions in. It's more fun when the questions are more challenging. So send them in. and. Um, just keep listening because I will eventually get to your questions. Otherwise, have an amazing, amazing rest of your day and take care.